Welcome to the Workology podcast, where we discuss the science and art of the workplace, gain powerful insights, resources, and perspectives on the industries of human resources and recruiting. Join your host, Jessica Miller Merrill, chief blogger of bloggingforjobs.com, for a 45 minute in depth and no holes barred look into the future of our most powerful business asset, the employee. And now, here's your host, Jessica, with this episode of Workology. Welcome to the Workology Podcast. It's great to have you on our podcast as part of the Blogging for Jobs and Recruiters Lounge Bog family. My name's Jessica Miller Merrill, and today's podcast is all about holiday party tips and suggestions to avoid getting the pink slip. The topic of today's podcast is how not to get fired at your holiday party at work. Having worked in human resources, I have my share of stories of holiday party nightmares and horror stories that will make your toes crawl. Today, we have a guest who is an etiquette expert who's going to help us navigate through the busy and possibly boozy holiday party season. My guest today is Carrie Sue Vega. She's a longtime friend and etiquette expert who works with both business professionals and youth and talks and teaches them all about etiquette. Hi, Carrie Sue. Welcome to the Workology Podcast again. Hi, Jessica. Happy to be here again. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about you and and what you do. Um, Well, just kind of a quick association with me. I I try to bring fun and fresh approach to etiquette and professionalism training. Um, I have a degree and background in recreation. So I try to infuse some levity in the topic because, you know, when you think of manners and etiquette, usually people kind of sit up straight and think of their grandmother. So um, I really try and come at it more from an approach of hospitality versus formality. And plus, you know, bring that recreation degree, make it fun. Who wants to sit through another boring presentation? Well, that's what we're here to do on on the Workology podcast. This is not your mom's etiquette podcast. I don't know if your mom has an (laughs) etiquette podcast, but it's not. Uh, We're here to talk about holiday party do's and don'ts. Uh, Every year, me working in HR, there is some nightmare that comes to fruition. It's something that most HR professionals, and if you're listening to this podcast and you're in HR, you're nodding your head with me. We try to avoid. We would prefer not to have a party, certainly not want to have alcohol present in these events because it just causes all kinds of issues. So this podcast might be for you, but we hope that you pass it on to your team. So maybe you make the team assignment for employees, download the podcast, listen in and learn all about etiquette, tips, suggestions for that holiday party, because a podcast is so much more fun than handing out that little one sheet that you have everybody sign off. So have them listen to the Workology podcast on their drive home. As I mentioned, today's topic is all about how to avoid getting fired at your next holiday work party. It's something that we've talked about nearly every year in the history of Blogging for Jobs, which is seven years strong. So I'll have lots of great resources for you if you just go to bloggingforjobs.com and put holiday party fired in the right-hand search box of the bloggingforjobs.com. We'll have some resources. Carrie Sue's going to have some resources there for you. So that's your homework assignment for those of you. Who are listening in. We're going to talk about it, this topic, because it is still very popular with our readership and the media. I know Carrie Sue and I normally each individually do two or three interviews on this topic over the holiday season. So it's something that uh, seems to be popular with the news. So we're just going to nip it in the bud so to speak, and talk about it now. Uh, We'll be putting this podcast out just before the beginning of the Thanksgiving holiday. So uh, as you're traveling to your destination, you can download this and uh, get up to speed. So I want to ask Carrie Sue here, aside from the obvious reasons, why is etiquette so important during this holiday season? Well, I think in general, etiquette provides the rules for appropriate behavior. And keeping that in mind, when you breach those rules of etiquette, you cross the lines of inappropriate behavior becoming inappropriate, and that's when you find yourself in awkward situations. And I think you're right. It does continue to be a hot topic year after year because as adults, we all know better. But again, every single year it happens. Somebody gets overserved, and the rest is history. And now it is all over Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and every other social network you might have ever imagined because we can shoot and record the incident from your holiday work party forever through social media. Exactly. Which makes it even more scary. (laughs) Good golly. Uh, What are some tips and suggestions you have for those who are going to be hitting the holiday work party or the holiday networking scene as we roll into this Thanksgiving week? 
Exactly. You do want to, you know, like I said, we all know better, but every year someone gets overserved and, and you don't want to be the one headlining the water cooler conversation Monday morning. And you don't want any of your staff to be the headliner either. So I think just some basic tips and suggestions. First of all, start off on the right foot. When you get that invitation for your holiday party, RSVP. I don't know why that's so hard. And as HR pros, you all are probably coordinating some of those events. And you know, it drives you nuts when you send out an invitation and people don't RSVP and you have to track them down. So first of all, start off on the right foot, be respectful and RSVP. Um, my next suggestion is don't be a no-show, um, especially if you have RSVP'd, show up. I think so many people have anxiety over social events like this because it's um, out of their normal, um, you know, eight to five work day. It's something a little bit different. They're, they're going to have to have different conversations. And I think there's anxiety associated with that. But don't be a no-show show up. This is a great opportunity to network, a great opportunity to meet people from other departments. So make sure you go. Um, when you get there, keep in mind technology. We love technology, but technology, there's really no place for that at the holiday party. Um, the holiday party is great for some good old-fashioned FaceTime. Uh -huh, yes, <laughs> pun intended. Pun intended. Um, so put the technology away. You know, don't be hovering in the corner. Yes, it's perfectly fine. We talked about this in a previous podcast about um, snapping a picture here and there. That's perfectly fine. You can post it after you leave, you know, how much fun you had at the party or whatever. But don't sit in the corner, you know, continually updating whatever. Give the technology a break. Put it away. And um, I think another tip is watch your mouth. Um, just because it's an after-hours party doesn't mean the conversation can turn after hours. It still is a professional event. So, you know, gossip, there's no place for gossip. There's no place for inappropriate jokes. Um, just be careful about the conversation that you have. And then, of course, flirting. I mean, you see it all the time. People have that, they, you know, get a couple of drinks and they think, oh, that guy from that other department is so cute. Now's my time. I'm going to go talk to him or vice versa. So flirting, no room for that at the office party. Perfect. Perfect. There's a study, and I'm going to try to look it up here as we're talking, about the impact of alcohol and really that uh, study about drinking even, it, it, you are saying what you mean. Uh, you're just not saying, you, it's not those inhibitions, it's actually the truth. Exactly um, it's the just truth. not something that you, you might, you don't have a filter on to say, hey, uh, I might not need to, to say or to, to keep my hands to myself. Your, um, those, those just parts of your brain aren't functioning. So you have a tendency to get a little bit in, in a little bit more trouble. You're a higher risk for those sort of things. Exactly. I would also advise with the technology, there's no need to live tweet or Instagram uh, said holiday network party event. That is a great way to get you in the HR office, uh, specifically if you thought something was funny from a boss or a colleague that might put them in embarrassing light. Uh, you don't want to hurt people's feelings or their reputation. So put the technology down and then just take a couple snapshots, maybe, you know, a couple of candidates, maybe a selfie or two, but that paints everybody in a, in a positive, not a negative light. Right. And you also want to be careful just in general, when you're, you know, tweeting about parties that you're attending, um, there may be a, if you're, it, it gets, it gets kind of gray and kind of hard because if your office party was opened to maybe a few of your top clients, but it wasn't open to your entire client list, and you're tweeting about the party, and you have a client that wasn't included, then feelings get hurt, and you may lose business from it. So you need to be really careful about what you're putting out there, and how your entire audience is viewing if they were included or not. My holiday party horror story starts with a manager who drank way too much at the holiday work party. Our event was a formal one, and, and one of my regional managers had brought a date. He was a senior level manager, and he had a little bit more than he should have to drink, and he decided to go on stage to impress his girlfriend, who um, was new. We, we had just all met her, but he wanted to show her his mad karaoke skills. We had karaoke on stage uh, during this holiday party event, and mostly he slurred and stumbled when he got on stage. Uh, so we were singing, and after his performance, uh, he was affectionately known as Barf because that's what he did. 
as he was leaving the stage, he got a little sick. It was definitely a mood killer for everybody and extremely embarrassing for his girlfriend as well as our team. That was a not not a fun conversation for me as the HR lady come Monday morning, and, and I have had a number of those. And the sad thing about it is you identified him as a manager. The manager should know better. Hello. Definitely should know better. And, and I wanted to ask you, Carrie Sue, in light of my story, I want to discuss the importance of your date because I don't know if it's the best time to bring a first date or maybe somebody who isn't already part of the fold or really knows kind of the crew. What do you recommend? Uh, what type of date do you, do you bring to a work holiday event like this? Exactly. Your date is a direct reflection of you. And so if you're married, that's one thing. Obviously, you already know your spouse well enough, and your spouse probably knows a little bit of the background on the people who will be attending. If you bring a date, somebody who's new to the situation, first of all, you don't know how they are going to represent themselves in the situation. Are they going to be the ones that are overserved? Are you going to be embarrassed? Um, You know, obviously a flip of your story above, Um, but your date is your direct reflection of you. So if you are bringing someone that's that you're new to the relationship, I know, Jessica, you talk about having a wingman. Instead of taking a new date, I would probably go with somebody that you know, that you know how they are going to act and how they are going to um, behave themselves and make sure that it is a good reflection of you. If you do take your spouse or somebody that you do know, you're cool, you don't have to worry, they're not going to embarrass you, um, don't forget about them. Make sure you introduce them to people. What I see happen often is the person whose work party it is, they get caught up in conversations with their buddies or their friends or people that they already know, and their spouse or their date is left just kind of hanging, you know, a foot behind, not involved in the conversation. So make sure that you bring them into the fold, make sure you introduce them to people and even in the car ride on the way there, give them a little backstory, you know, turn off the music, have them put their phone down, have a conversation about um, workplace dynamics and things that are going on. You obviously don't want to get into any, you know, secrets or you're not going to do any gossip or anything, but um, just kind of give them a heads up as far as what they're getting ready to walk into so that they can feel comfortable and they can feel confident and they can be that good reflection on you. I think it's really important to choose your date wisely because they are a huge reflection on you and and you want to make sure that that they aren't going to hurt your reputation at the office uh, for whatever reason, uh, maybe drinking too much or inappropriate behavior or touching or all these kind of like horror stories that we hear a lot happening at the workplace holiday party with employees. Definitely you can be terminated for your activities of your date Um, you're the one who chose to bring them there and it's uh, definitely a reflection upon you. Big, big choice and a good choice to put some thought into. Yes. So select your wing man or wing woman wisely. We're going to take a little bit of a reset here. This is Jessica Miller Merrill and you're listening to the Workology podcast powered by blogging for jobs. Today's topic is how to not get fired at your holiday party, which I think is an important topic considering the time of year. Um, Maybe you're getting ready to decorate your tree or putting together your kind of holiday party plans and activities and things that you're going to be doing. I want to uh, introduce, reintroduce my guest, Carrie Sue Vega. She is an etiquette expert and you can connect with her on Twitter at etiquette101. I took to social media today as we were planning on recording and producing this podcast. So I talked with Twitter and Facebook to look for some work holiday party horror stories before we recorded the podcast. And I wanted to share a couple with you. Uh, The first one is from our fellow blogging for jobs writer, Mike Hoberman, good friend of mine, also HR consultant. He shares with us a story of an HR manager who showed up to the office dressed as Santa. Now this was not his normal office, but it was a facility that he was responsible for. And he started participating participating in the holiday drinking. He later invited women to sit on his lap as Santa and get their package. You can only imagine what happened next. Uh, Fortunately, the VP of sales stepped in and unfortunately, this HR manager lost his job. Uh, The moral of the story here is that it isn't just HR who, um, 
or isn't just the employee who's at risk for their job. Sometimes people make mistakes, uh, including even human resources. I always recommend that people follow what I call a two drink maximum at the holiday party or really any business networking event. Not everyone drinks though. And this is what the question that I wanted to ask Carrie Sue, how does one fit into kind of the festivities without either drinking too much or maybe they don't drink at all? Exactly. It's 2014 and you would think that we wouldn't have to have this conversation, but we do. Unfortunately, some people go, oh, well, you know, why aren't you drinking? Why don't you have a glass of wine in your hand? And there are way too many, re- way too many answers to that question. And we don't need to get into that. No. So two drink maximum, you know, when I work with college kids, I'm like, it's an open bar. And they always say, yay, open bar. That means we get all we can drink. No, no, no. One, two drinks, end of story. And if you don't even want to have alcohol, you know, order a soda with lime. Go whisper to the bartender and tip them five bucks and say, anytime somebody brings me a drink, make sure it's soda with lime or something. And it obviously looks like you're drinking something. Um, you could even, you know, if, 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 if there's not liquor, if it's just wine and beer or something, you know, order one glass and then sneak off to the corner of the bathroom, put your lips up to the glass so that you get that. If you're a lady, you know, you get a lipstick mark on it. Even if you're a guy, you can see that your mouth has been on it and hold on to that one glass all, all night. You don't have to drink it. But unfortunately people say things that they don't realize they're saying and they don't realize what a knucklehead they come off of, come off as by implying that you have to drink because you don't have to drink. So, you know, if you are going to drink, yes, two drink maximum and then pop open a bottle of wine. You, when you get home, as you, you know, think about the evening's events, but in a controlled environment. Control yourself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I would just like to also say that if you're at an event and someone isn't drinking, don't make an assumption for the reason why they're not drinking. Uh, they're not necessarily all pregnant. If they're women, they aren't all alcoholics either. And when we ask these really personal questions, I, I think it's just best to keep the conversation lighthearted. And you talked about this in the earlier podcast that we produced the week prior, where we talked about millennials and uh, business etiquette. I, I'm assuming that you agree here that we should keep the conversation like lighthearted. What are some topics to avoid at all costs, do you think? Absolutely. And, and again, as adults, we know better, but I can't tell you how many times somebody has asked me an inappropriate question that, that I think they mean well. I mean, for example, as a woman, and if you're married, they want to know if you have kids. And if you don't have kids, why don't you have kids? And we all know that's completely inappropriate, but it happens time and time again. So ask some open ended questions. You know, what are your plans for the holiday season? And when they start talking, listen to what they say. And it's going to be obvious if there's a family involved. It's going to be obvious if there's children involved. And then you can go down that road. So just ask some easy, open-ended questions. You know, what are your plans? Um, if you have a local sports team, you can ask, you know, talk about, have you seen any games lately? Or, you know, be careful. Everyone says be careful with politics and religion and all that stuff. And it's true. It's absolutely true. You need to be careful with that because that's the best way to get into an argument with someone faster than, you know, what hits you. Agreed. Agreed. And, and, you know, not everybody, um, believes with your personal, all your personal beliefs are are religious opinions. And, and certainly if you want to cause up some, some debate, there's a time and a place for for those kind of conversations. Definitely not during the holiday party when uh, you've, you've all had uh, one or two glasses of wine, hopefully at, at the most too. I wanted to share another workplace horror story from the HR front lines. It comes from a good friend of mine and HR practitioner, Robin Schooling. Robin says the DJ was playing some mid nineties hip hop song, which we all know and love is, is a favorite at uh, the holiday party with the DJ, a female employee who was exceptionally what she describes as well endowed was on the dance floor dancing with the male CEO. Alas, due to her frequent gyrations, her strapless dress slid down over the girls and set them free, if you know what I mean. This did not bother (laughs) her in the least, and she finished the song, and then she calmly hoisted up her dress and went back to the bar. The CEO, however, was... was extremely uh, awkward, as rightfully he should be, and he never knew after that where to put his eyes. So uh, another story uh, from from the HR front lines uh, from our friend Robin Schooling. 
I want to talk a little with you, Carrie Sue, about dress code, uh, because this comes up quite common, and, and I've seen a number of really inappropriate outfits and, and costumes or what have you that, that happen to come out during these holiday party uh, workplace events. What is the dress code that you recommend for these kind of things? Well, I think my first um, recommendation based on your story is don't wear strapless dresses. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. And I actually, when I talk to girls, even when I do any young bride workshops, I'm like I know strapless dresses are popular right now, but not too many people can truly pull them off confidently without touching them. And there's nothing worse than seeing a young lady tugging and pulling and re, you know, positioning. So don't wear a strapless dress. Uh, so anyway, go, okay. I could talk about that for 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> basic dress recommendations for a holiday party. Um, well, we talked about being a no show and you also don't want to be a low show just as this lady found out. Um, the party may be at a bar, but it's still a business event. You can definitely have fun with your wardrobe by still remaining professional. There's even a trend in um, cl the clothing industry right now called from desk to dinner. And you can still buy clothes that are perfectly fine and perfectly appropriate and perfectly transitional that you could wear during the day to the office and then you know, change a jacket or change the jewelry, change your shoes, and it's perfectly acceptable for an evening evening event. So just keep in mind, yes, it may be at a bar, but it still is a business event. As far as what specifically to wear to your holiday party, you might have to do a little bit of investigative work. Ask around, maybe ask what some other people are wearing. I know that when my husband and I go places together, um, you would think that the guys have it easy. My husband usually always says, you know, find out what so-and-so's husband is wearing because does he need to throw on a jacket and tie or is it just a, you know, dress shirt and pants? And um, he always wants to make sure that he's dressed appropriately. So I think sometimes as women, we think it's just about us and it's really about everyone. So do a little bit of an investigation and find out what other people are wearing. I always say it's better to be overdressed versus underdressed. But then again, you don't want to show up looking like Carrie Bradshaw from Sex and the City, you know, totally decked out. So um, appropriate is key. I think your story above uh, earlier with the lady in the strapless dress says it all. Um, and you want to be remembered for all the right reasons and not what you wore for the wrong reasons. Your work assets, not your work assets. Exactly. I, I will just add on here that I think that this is a huge area of concern, one that most of us HR folks can say that oh, this is one of the reasons why we don't enjoy the holiday party because inevitably somebody comes in and um, has a really low cut top on or Maybe they're wearing jeans when it's a formal occasion. It's, it's, I don't like being the fashion police or the flip flop police or the holiday party police. It's not something that I enjoy. So if you just maybe take a look at previous pictures, ask around, uh, definitely Facebook. If you are, if your company has a company Facebook page where they have examples of dress or you can get access you, to something like that, that will give you an idea of what was appropriate last year and, and kind of what the status quo was going into the this year's event. Do a little PI work. Yes, yes. And it just makes it easier for everyone. For myself, the holiday season is a perfect time to get out there and start networking. There are so many good events outside of your work holiday party that are happening. And it's a great way to kind of kickstart your business building or your relationship building for the new year. January, unfortunately for HR folks, is also the month when most terminations and layoffs happen. Historically, companies do not lay you off during the holiday season or terminate you for uh, involuntarily terminate you during this time. Now, I don't want to to uh, cause panic because I don't know for certain if what where your your organization is financially as far as like health wise but uh, things are much better than they were many years ago however January seems to be the month where in my personal experience there were more terminations um, as we began the new fiscal year the good news like if I'm looking at the upside here also is that this is also the month when most hiring managers begin their new fiscal year and they're adding headcounts to their budget so if you're looking for a new job or an opportunity it is can be also a positive thing. I do want to talk about these networking opportunities because I think that 
there's also kind of a standard set of rules and opportunities, uh, sort of etiquette that goes around the business networking, not just your work holiday party. What suggestions do you, Carrie Sue, have for folks who are listening how to put their best foot forward when they're maybe thinking about entering the job market or maybe trying to gain new business to their already existing if they're in the sales environment or, or in some sort of business development role in 2015? Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, just getting out there and attending the networking events is half the battle. We, we talked about it earlier as far as people have anxiety when um, they think about attending these. I always like to think about Tom Hanks in the movie Big when he's standing there. You know, he's really what an eight-year-old in a big person's body. And we as adults really have those same fears when we go to a networking event. Who are we going to talk to? What What's going to be expected of us? We kind of have those same fears. So just it's get kind of tuck those away, get past those, and and keep in mind that people want to do business with people they like. And yes, we all have to do business with people we don't like. We know that. But in the grand scheme of things, if you could pick your druthers, you'd rather work with someone you get along with. And so I think looking at networking as an opportunity to build your friendship base, um, it may sound a little cheesy, but it's really true. So mingle, get out there. Yes, when you walk into a party, yes, go say hi to the people that you know. You know, that would be awkward to not say hi to them. Go say hi to them. Break the ice. You know, get your mojo going. And then make it a goal of meeting two or three new people. And even if it's at a work party, you know, don't cold court with your besties over in the corner. Look at it as an opportunity to meet some people from different departments. And who knows, it may be a great opportunity for you to make a relationship with somebody new who might end up being an advocate for you um, down the road if there is a question as far as layoffs or if you do end up finding yourself in um, a new job search. They may end up being a great advocate for you as far as um, resources and, and networking. So just think about building yeah, we all know the cheesy phrases, building a net that works. Well, we all know that, but it's so true. So look at these as opportunities and don't be overwhelmed. We all have met that guy. And I say guy, no, no offense, gentlemen. It's usually a guy that walks up and says, Hey, here's 10 cards. Give nine of them to your friends. And where do we put all of those cards when we leave the event? Straight into the trash can. So I like to make a connection with someone before the exchange, the business card takes place. Um, get to know them, listen, you know, you all of a sudden are their new best friend. If you've listened to them and let them talk, I know that sounds crazy, but letting them talk and talk about themselves, they think you're the best networker ever. So ask some of those open, open, easy questions that we talked about earlier, get to know them and dress appropriately, show up, don't drink too much, mix and mingle, RSVP, all those things that we talked about, and you'll have a great networking season during the holidays this year. The holiday season is a great time to reconnect with friends, coworkers, family members, make new business connections. And I think we're all in agreement here that we're kind of in the, the network economy, right? The engagement economy where we, it's all about personal relationships that are that to help our business foundation and our professional career and whatever it, that we choose to do. So this just kind of gives you some guidelines and information and hopefully some helpful tips to get you started as you're networking and, and building relationships in that holiday season, whether it's at your work event or um, other areas of opportunity. I want to thank you for joining the Workology podcast. I want to go ahead and thank my guest again, Carrie Sue Vega. Carrie Sue, tell us where we can find out more about you. Um, you can find me. I have a blog, carriesuevega.com, where I post um, Manor Monday. I do a blog post every week on a Manor topic. It could be um, business-related. It could be kids-related. I write for you, Jessica, um, Manor Monday posts as well, focused on business. And then my website, it's a mouthful, but it um, – understanding kind of my background. I didn't talk about that today, but coming from cruise ships, I, I focus on expeditions and etiquette and that's my website. So a mouthful, but if you'll Google expeditions and etiquette, you'll be able to find my business website. And if you go to bloggingforjobs.com and, and take a look at our podcast, it's just forward slash podcast, we'll be able to connect you to everything related to Carrie Sue and some additional resources that we've shared with you a little bit today. Uh, as I mentioned, we have written a lot about this topic over the years on Blogging for Jobs. We'll be sharing some great resources there. Just go to bloggingforjobs.com. And if you just 
check out podcasts, we'll be able to get you to these resources. Thank you for taking the time today to check out the Workology podcast. We hope you learned something about how to avoid getting fired during the holiday season at your work party or event. This is the Workology podcast where we discuss the art and science of the workplace HR and recruitment. Until next time, you can visit Blogging for Jobs to listen to all our episodes. We'll see you soon. Production services for the Workology podcast with Jessica Miller-Merrill provided by Total Picture.